Hello everyone, today I'm going to be telling you why you should not convert your existing game into a Unity ECS project. Or, well, maybe you could. You know, just give me a few minutes to explain and by the end of the video you'll know if it makes sense for you to convert your Unity game into an ECS project. If you don't know anything about Unity's entity component system or their data oriented technology stack, I'd highly recommend checking out this playlist right here where I go over everything you need to know about getting started with Unity Dots and ECS and how you can start taking advantage of all the massive performance benefits. Now, if you're a little more familiar with Unity Dots and ECS and maybe you're even considering converting your project to use these things, then I highly recommend checking out our Discord community. In there, we've been building up a nice community of Dots and ECS developers, and I think it's a really great place for people to go to ask questions and kind of get some help, and for us to all just kind of share knowledge about these new frameworks. And before I get into the video, I'd just like to say, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on Unity Dots and ECS. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. All right, so I really think that you should not convert your existing game into an ECS project. Now, if after I explain why that is, you still kind of want to maybe think about converting your game to ECS, I'm gonna give you a couple alternate solutions if you do wanna take advantage of ECS in your current project. All right, so the main reason why I say that you shouldn't convert your existing game into an ECS project is because converting your game is gonna end up being much more of a headache than if you were to just start your project from scratch. You know, as you're going through the process of converting, you're gonna end up in this kind of like weird scenario where you have like some new ECS code and then some of this um, kind of old code kind of running side by side and not everything's gonna work and you're gonna get all sorts of ridiculous errors because you know all these things are kind of dependent on each other and that's just not all there. So as you're going through this conversion process it's gonna be really challenging to test your game out because you know when you just hit the play button and you get like a thousand errors you know you're gonna be basically just kind of like fighting fires getting rid of all those errors until you can finally test your game a little bit and then you know you move on to the next step of converting something and you're just gonna be going through that process over and over and over again. So at this point, you're really just more of being a firefighter rather than an actual constructor who's building a game. And the next reason I say this is because your game was not designed with ECS in mind. If it was, then you would have started using ECS from the get-go and you wouldn't be running into this problem of trying to convert everything into Unity ECS. And while yes, there are a lot of things you can do in Unity ECS and they're adding more and more things every day it seems like, there's still a bunch of things that you know you can do in traditional Unity programming that you can't do in Unity ECS yet. And it's very possible that if you didn't make your game with ECS in mind, you probably used some of that code that you know you can't really translate easily over to Unity ECS. So then you kind of start having to like hack things together, and then again you get into this like you know weird situation where you're just kind of writing a bunch of messy code, and then at some point it almost doesn't even matter that you're getting these performance benefits from ECS, just because everything is thrown together and there's still a bunch of dependencies back on um, some regular mono behaviors. And then the last kind of major reason why I think it's a bad idea for you to convert your game into an ECS project is because if you're new to Unity ECS, which chances are you probably are because it's such a new technology, that it's actually gonna be really challenging for you to convert your game into Unity ECS because you're just not really that familiar with it. And this kind of goes back to my last point where how not everything is built out in Unity ECS yet. So you probably aren't gonna even know about many of these workarounds and you're kind of just gonna be like learning on the fly. And there's nothing wrong with learning on the fly. I do that plenty of times myself. But I think if you really want to get a good grasp for ECS, it's going to be much better if you kind of start from the beginning, start from the very basics, and then work your way up to more complex things rather than, you know, kind of starting with this complex game that you've already made and then just trying to throw it over into ECS. It's not going to go over too well for you. So those are pretty much my main reasons of why I think that you should not convert your existing Unity game project into an ECS project. Now, as promised, I'm gonna provide you with some alternatives if you still wanna take advantage of some of the performance benefits that you get from Unity ECS. All right, so my number one recommendation, and I hope this doesn't feel like a cop-out answer, but it's to start a brand new project with ECS in mind. And this should be a brand new project, literally not even related to your current project or any other project that you've worked on in the past. This should be a brand new, fresh project 
when you're starting with ECS in mind from the very beginning. Now this makes the most sense to me because you're making a project designed with ECS in mind. So once you kind of have an idea of some of the cool things you can do with ECS, then maybe you can kind of start thinking about, you know, what kinds of games would make sense um, to build it using the entity component system. And a game made with the entity component system is just structurally different at its core than most games made with traditional Unity object-oriented programming. Also, kind of like I mentioned before, this is gonna be the best way for you to learn ECS by starting a project from the beginning and then making a full you know, project all the way to the end. All right, now. That being said, if you still really want to use ECS for your current project, then again, I'd say start a new project, but then you can kind of reuse some of the art assets that you've already made and a bunch of the logic that you already have. I don't really have a problem with that. If again, if it makes sense for your game to actually take advantage of ECS in certain situations. And again, I think starting from pretty much a blank canvas makes the most sense to me because you really learn so much with each and every project that you do. And chances are when you go back to, you know, code that you maybe even wrote a few months ago, you're gonna find a bunch of things that say, oh, I can do this a better way. Um, you know, this could be a little bit more efficient. And you can kind of clean up that code along the way as you kind of start building out this new project, even if you are reusing some of the art assets and game logic. But again, you should kind of be building out things in a logical order from start to finish, instead of kind of like bouncing around and picking little parts from here and there, because I, th I think that's gonna be a better way for you to learn is to you know start from the very basics in the beginning and then work your way up to more complex things. Now, if you have some crazy large and complex project that you like really do not wanna start over for some reason, you know, I get it, that's fine. So in that scenario, I think there are you know, some ways that you can still use ECS without having to recreate your whole project. Now, if you do wanna start converting things over to ECS, I'd recommend finding kind of the most kind of independent parts of your project that could take advantage of ECS. So find something that doesn't really interact with a whole lot of other systems and then build that out in ECS and make sure that's rock solid before moving on to the next thing. So again, pretty much just take it one system at a time and get that all working. And I mean, make sure there is actually a reason that you're converting to ECS other than that you just want to experiment with ECS. Because if you want to experiment with ECS, you know, just make, you know, a, a new project like I was saying. But if you do think there are some performance benefits that you can get from ECS, then go for it or maybe if you can kind of get some similar results by just using the C-sharp job system without converting all the way to ECS, then maybe go look at that too. Anyways, I think that's about all I have to say in today's video. Again, those are some of my reasons why I think that you should not convert your uh, Unity, existing Unity project into an ECS project. However, if you do still want to convert your game to an ECS project, I gave you some alternatives of some things that you can do. Anyways, um, if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on Unity Dots and ECS. Of course, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comments section below or check into the Discord server. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.